Welcome back, everybody. Monday Morning Briefing, episode 37. It's June the 28th. It is Monday, but it is not morning, hence why I'm drinking El Topo Chico instead of coffee um, right now because it's about 4.30 in the afternoon. Get down, Huey. Huey's bugging me. So Saturday I came in, I had already kind of started working on the buckhorn video, going through all the footage and getting everything lined up. Uh, Saturday I put in a pretty good day in here trying to get everything completed on the video as far as the timeline. Got everything pretty well put together and really made some good headway and then had to head home. We had some family come in. Claudia's family came in for uh, to watch the kids show their heifer on Sunday. And so we went and did that in Gonzales. It was a fantastic show. The kids showed really, really well. And my little boy ended up winning a buckle again for the uh, commercial division. So his heifer ended up winning in that class and he had a little bit more competition this time. So he got reserve champion, breed champion, I believe, and got a buckle. So he was super, super excited. Quit. My daughter showed really well also, but she didn't end up winning a buckle. But the belts are piling up, so I think I'm behind three belts for them, so I've got to get after it and get kind of caught up, um, especially after this weekend. So I've got marching orders to do that this week as far as get their belts kind of going so that I don't get too far behind because at the rate they're going, um, I may never fulfill my uh, promise to them on that. Hopefully we'll get that done. But then uh, we got home fairly early. We got home about 3.30, 4 o'clock, so I ended up coming to the shop uh, yesterday afternoon Sunday afternoon and uh, just kind of camped on that video some more because I'm really, really close. So when I came in today, first thing what I did was I went in there and I kind of did the brush up work on the video, got it all wrapped up. And so by the time you see this video, which will be Tuesday morning, hopefully, the buckhorn video will be right behind it. So Tuesday evening, maybe Wednesday morning, the buckhorn uh, project video, buckhorn bag project video will be out on our YouTube channel so you can watch that full, full build video. I will tell you that video is almost two hours long. I try to make it as short as possible. Again, I'm not a video editor, so I did the best I could. I hope you enjoy the video, but it is it is long, but it's a big project. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think there's all the steps in there, enough to where somebody can watch that video and actually follow along. And whether they use our pattern or whether they come up with their own pattern, they can build a bag very similar to that. And I think there's a lot of, a lot of neat tricks in there and a lot of good processes and systems in there where you can watch that video and make that bag. Huey. So last week's Monday morning video, I did mention that the pattern pack was supposed to be delivered any day now. So that day or the next day or something, um, right after I got through shooting that Monday morning video, I was in the office editing the uh, video to put on YouTube and he actually walked in and delivered our patterns for the Buckhorn briefcase. So we actually have these in stock currently. Now the first run of this, I only did 50 copies because I just wanted to kind of make sure everything was right, make sure they turned out. They're, they printed them on fairly heavy paper. It's not super heavy, but it's heavier than like newsprint or something like that. So they kind of barely fit in the envelopes, but they fit in there nicely. I mean, I think it's a it's an overall real nice packaging. I was really happy with it. The patterns themselves are really nice. The sheets are three foot by four foot, so they're very large. Uh, but all the information is there. There's even some tips in there on, on weight of leather that you need to use or that I would suggest you use and stuff like that. Um, but all the patterns are on there. I found one mistake on the pattern on this first 50 run, and that is for the uh, box loop closure for the actual loop part. I ended up, I knew the measurement of it, but whenever I created the file, I ended up using kind of the marker spot where it goes on the front front panel of the bag instead of the, its actual length. Because remember, it needs to be longer so that when you put it on the bag and actually stitch it, you're pulling it together to make the loop. You'll see that in the video on how I do that. That's so that you have enough so that when it comes through the square hole, you have room to stick either the deer antler or a tab of leather down through there. So it's supposed to create a loop. On the pattern, it says three inches and, it, and the actual size is three inches, but it's actually supposed to be four inches. But I figured on my first large format printed pack, if that's the only typo that I find, or the only uh, correction that I need to make, that's pretty small. So we're gonna update the file, the next run or the next print of this pattern, it'll be correct in there. In the meantime, for uh, those watching or for those that maybe won't see this video and don't know that that, that pattern is actually an inch too short, um, we will put a note inside each one of these when we mail them to explain that. And it's real simple because that loop piece is three quarters of an inch wide and it's only, it needs to be four inches long. So if somebody makes it and then tries to put it on, they'll, they'll see that it's too short and it's not a big important piece that you have to, you know, go through a lot of trouble to remake. But we'll put a note in there on each one of these and that way everybody can make that correction. But but like I said, it is available. And by the time you see this, they will be on the website 
And so if you want to purchase one of these, you certainly can. You can go to the website and, and order one of these. Remember that I'm only offering this in the printed version, so we will mail this out to you. This is not an instant download, and I will not offer it in an instant download um, for quite some time because it's a very large file and I don't have the technical skills to be able to walk people through trying to either tile this and print it or to take it to a print shop and ensure that they're going to print it the correct size um, because there it does need to be printed in the correct format or else it's going to be scaled up or down or something like that. So to keep it easy, printed version only, that's what we're gonna offer. And so if you order one of these, expect it in the mail, we'll get it shipped out to you and you will have a hard copy and then you can make your patterns off of that. I would suggest not cutting your patterns out of this. Like don't cut the paper that the pattern is on. Don't cut that, or at least I wouldn't suggest that because then you ruin the pattern um, and that's your only copy. So I would keep those hard copies on any pattern packs that you buy or physical packs, even the ones you print. What I would suggest is taking a heavy pencil and marking or tracing that all the way off and then turning that over onto your poster board and tracing the back side of that with a stylus and that'll transfer the lead to the poster board and then you can cut the poster board out. Um, or you could use tracing film if you want to use that or some kind of tracing paper. But I would suggest doing that because it, it's a little bit more trouble because you've got to recreate all these patterns but then you'll have hard copies out of poster board or whatever you're um, your choice is of making your patterns out of, but then you'll you'll still have your original pattern pack that you bought, and then you can put this in a filing cabinet or something like that, and it's nice and safe. If your patterns get destroyed or they kind of get damaged or something, you can always come back to that and make another one. I've seen some people online where they cut them out, they actually cut them from the pattern, and um, well, then you pretty much ruin your, your pattern pack um, when you do that, so I wouldn't suggest that. But anyway, buckhorn bag, I'm glad it's over. It was a very fun project. It was a long project for us just because we worked on it on the side on, on other things because you gotta remember we also built saddles during that time as well as having to shoot all the footage for that and then create the pattern and all that. So it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Hopefully it'll help me going forward to do more and more of those bigger, larger projects like that, much like the yoke tote. Hopefully we'll be able to come up with something for the yoke tote for we are gonna do the video and hopefully I can get a pattern pack that will actually work and, uh, and and will do well. I don't know how functional this bag is for an everyday carry kind of bag or a very common bag. This is more of a, uh, as it gets further along, I'm understanding that this bag in particular is more of just a show off piece or a show piece. It's not something that uh, my wife or, or another lady would carry this around every day all the time as her daily purse or daily tote, but it is a very unique piece and it's a fun project to try to build and it is coming together well, but we will try to do a pattern pack for this for anybody that just wants to try their hand at it or at least have it so that they can use it to modify to make it to work for them. But we did get the top panel in. We got it shot. I did line that with some dark brown goat skin there and that made it feel really nice. It's kind of soft, but yet it's still got enough body to, to stabilize the top of the bag. It sewed in very nicely. Zipper works really well and um, it's got quite a bit of room in there. So the bag itself is pretty well done. Um, I got the edges slicked and all that. Got those dyed. The, the bag, the body of the bag is completed. Now all we've got to do is come up with a design for the handles. And I'll be working on that hopefully this weekend, maybe. Uh, it's 4th of July weekend, so we'll see what happens. But I'm sure I'll have some shop time where I can kind of get in here by myself and then try to try to come up with a cool little idea for the handles to make something, something neat that kind of goes with this with this bag but that's the o tote it is coming along and it is almost done and that's another one that i'm i'm gonna be glad when it's done because i want to set it out there in the window or set it on the out, out there on the sales floor so people can look at it i think it's a great conversation piece and uh, like i said before it will be in waco if you're going to come to the waco leather show um, in august on august 6th 7th and 8th it, it will be there if you want to check it out and you bag makers tell me what i did wrong and and, and all that kind of thing because i just kind of went at it went at it as I did and it came out the way it is. So um, a couple other things, we are working on a rope can. And so I got that tooled or started the tooling on it. Some of y'all may have seen on my Instagram feed, some pictures of some hibiscus type flowers. I've done these before, but I've never been like super, super happy with them. Not sure that I'm super, super happy with these either, but I like the way they look. And I'm just trying some different tooling applications. They're kind of a tricky flower to tool and to get the right texture on them to where they actually look like hibiscus. But they wanted kind of that Hawaiian theme on this, on this one. I don't think we're gonna paint the flowers and stuff, but I'm not real sure yet. But we're making some good progress on that. So we'll be tooling that. And I did get the rope cans in to get that finished up, but that's one of our projects we're gonna to try to get done this week. 
Also had a really nice fella come visit the shop. He came by and was wanting to talk to me about some alligator skins. He had some questions and he needed to, needed my help doing a couple things. And so he ended up coming in and we got a couple uh, American alligator skins off of him that we bought and they are really, really nice. This one here is fairly small, but it's a pretty turquoise color and Claudia really likes turquoise. So we ended up getting, getting that one as well. And then this gray one here that Claudia has some idea for a project. She's not quite sure what she wants to do with it yet, but we got that. And I really like working with American Alligator. Now, American Alligator is going to be quite a bit more pricey than your Cayman skin. So if you're wanting to do some little bags or wallets or anything like that, and you don't want to spend a ton of money on material, um, I would probably suggest trying some Caymans. They're very nice. I've used a few, quite a few Caymans in, over the years, and, uh, and they're great. And they're quite a bit less expensive than the American Alligator. The American Alligator, like we've talked about before on the podcast as well as on here, American Alligator is going to be your highest priced exotic most of the time. Um, and it's just very expensive, but it's very, very nice to work with. It's very clean, works really well, and, um, and it's got a very expensive look to it on the finished product. So if you're trying to build really high-end or high-scale type wallets or belts or anything like that american alligator is you can't you really can't beat it um most people when they see alligator they think expensive and so if you're trying to to go that route and you're trying to build some real high-end pieces um i i like to think that you, you've almost always got to incorporate a little bit of alligator in there at some point just because it, it's just got that kind of following but i'm excited about these skins mainly they're just going to hang on the sales floor till we find out what we're going to do with them till we kind of find that perfect project to cut into them I'm always kind of scared cutting into these because you really only have one shot. Once you cut into them, they're cut. So at that point, you've either got to buy another one or make what you cut work. So you don't have a whole lot of leeway. Um, and that's the way it is with other leather too, but we just don't seem as, as nervous about cutting cowhide as we do cutting alligator especially or any kind of exotic. Another project that we got done that a lot of people, we, we got a lot of traffic on this on Instagram and it was just this very simple saddle scabbard. And honestly, this pattern is actually a very old Tandy pattern that they used to produce and they still may, but it was just out of their rifle scabbard pattern pack that they had, very, very simple. And they called this the boot, uh, saddle, saddle boot pattern, I think, or something like that. I changed the way the strap hangers mount here or the the these pockets where the strap goes around i changed those up a little bit but virtually the pattern is exactly right um and i want to do a lot of people want me to do a project video on this and i may but i'm going to have to change this some and do my own pattern um because i don't you know this one's already been done this isn't my pattern this is this right here is is the actual pattern from the tandy pattern pack and it just works i've used it many many years i've made a bunch of these things they're really good there's really nothing nothing wrong with the pattern. Um, I will say if you're going to line this particular one with sheepskin, which I do not recommend, but if you are going to line it with sheepskin, it's too small. You, it's very, it makes it very tight to get a gun in there, especially if you're using real uh, bark tan shirling. It's just going to make it too tight to get a gun in there. The reason I don't recommend using sheepskin in a lot of gun sheaths or gun scabbards, unless you're doing the big zip zip up ones that are made for storage, um, is because that real sheepskin, a lot of times that will hold moisture in there. It will cause some, some stuff that will react with the bluing of the gun, I've heard. There's just a lot of things where a lot of guys that are gun guys have cautioned me on using any kind of, any kind of stuff like that. So usually what I recommend is using synthetic or, which I do not like, or going in and just lining this if you've got to line it because some people think that the rough out is going to uh, do something. It's not so much the rough out, it's just friction that's going to you know take the bluing off but you're not in and out with a gun all the time and something like this because most people are going to purchase these just for kind of show pieces or whatever not many people ride unless you're up in the mountains hunting or something like that but then you're probably not carrying a just a 30 30 you're going to be carrying uh, some scoped rifle or something like that if you're packing in but if you are going to line one of these i just suggest using a nice chap leather or using a nice uh you know veg tan like three four ounce something like that just to cut down on the friction, this is a piece, I made this whole thing out of nine, 10 ounce Herman Oak skirting leather, that same stuff that I cut belts out of and that kind of thing. I had a couple sides that I didn't use for cutting belt blanks out of, and we save them for bigger projects, and I cut this out of that, and that's what we used. So the inside is actually the machined edge, it's not a real rough, rough outside or flesh side, 
And so I actually think it's really nice. No need to line it. And that's, we made this in pretty quickly. It didn't take very long to make one of these. But a lot of people requested that I do a project video on something like this and a pattern, and it'd be perfect for our um, large, larger format printing stuff. And we have that down. We definitely will. But I want to come up with one that's kind of my own that um, you can't really reinvent the wheel. These things have been made for many, many years. But I'm going to try to come up with something that's unique that's kind of our one of our designs that might work, you know, and kind of go from there. I know many of y'all just want really mainly the tooling patterns for something like that. So we'll try to put something together because the project itself is really easy. If you've been wanting to make one of these, they are not very hard. Tandy does sell. I'm pretty sure they still sell that pattern pack. I've just got the insert papers. I don't have the actual folder that it came in. So I don't know what it's called, but I think they have a saddle scabbard pattern pack um, still on their website or in their thing so you can sure check that out and i'm sure there's some other ones out there too like i said this is not a new item it's not something that that uh, any of us can really reinvent they've been done for for hundreds of years and so they're pretty simple but getting the dimensions right is really the trick on something like that and if you are going to make your own pattern if you're just going to take the gun and make your own pattern which is very easy it's not very hard to do i would say do not hyper fit your pattern to the rifle whatever rifle you're you're making it for Leave yourself plenty of room. That gun's not gonna wallow around too much, but don't don't try to get too close because if you make that thing where it's super tight and it fits the gun almost perfectly, it's gonna be very hard to get that gun in and out of there. And if it is gonna be strapped to a saddle, you don't wanna be fiddling with it, trying to get it out, out of there. You want it to you know, kind of come in and out easy and stay secure when you are riding with it in there. So as far as the Lost Trade podcast, we told you last week that we would have one towards the end of the week. It didn't happen, but it is edited. We're wrapping up all the fine, uh, final parts on that. So that episode should be out Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere around there. We should have it out. So be expecting that this week, and then we should hopefully get back on track. Like I said, we'll probably get to the point where we're only doing them twice a month um, just because, especially through the summer, just people's schedules and stuff like that. I do have a couple scheduled up for this week, so we're, we're kind of putting some in the pipeline where we've got, we've got some ahead of ourselves. So maybe we won't run run too far behind but every once in a while we will have a dark week or two or three we are still there we are still creating creating the podcast building that archive up and so and if you didn't know about lost trade be sure to check that out on apple and spotify and you can listen i don't there's a bunch of episodes on there a bunch of great people bruce johnson um jeremiah watt we interviewed wilson capper there's a bunch of them on there catalina hatters we're trying to get anybody that's a craftsman or an artist in the western lifestyle trades and get them on there, hear their story, hear where they came from and some of the issues that they deal with every day. And that way we can all just kind of learn from each other and kind of figure out who's out there, what they're doing and how they got there. That's really all I got for you this week, guys. I've been kind of camped out on this video all day and I uh, need to get back at it and get, get some of these projects moved forward. I got a bunch of belts I need to tool this week and stuff like that. And so we'll keep you updated. Remember, the briefcase video will be out either Tuesday or Wednesday, as well as a pattern pack. And we will keep you updated on new things that are going on on the website. We're cutting some new products and some other things as well, and just trying to get ready for the show in August. So we're getting down to the wire where we've got basically a month until that show comes around. And so we hope to see you there. If you haven't already, be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week in the Monday Morning Briefing.